we're back here at the Derby Underground Mine with, and a first for this channel, proper illumination. We have, uh, on the recommendation of uh, Justin from TVR, or Mr. TVR, we have acquired a Coast waterproof flashlight and a pretty decent high power spotlight. So we can actually cut through the darkness. So back this way is where that uh, that magazine trailer that was placarded for info we passed previously was. Let's see, uh, can count quite a quite a number of breaks down here. That's still not not great, but. It's better than we have had. Back this way, this side of mine appears to be a bit drier. Got some cones there. So we're going to continue this way. We're working on trying to rough out a map for the mine. Yeah, again, it ain't perfect, but it's a hell of a lot better than we have had previously. So they appear to have bolted more regularly on this side of the mine. Looks like bolts about every six feet. So if I were to, to guess, they probably used a jack leg. For these bolts based on when when this mine was uh was worked in the 80s uh something else interesting that we've got up here uh, this bullseye marker is actually going to be a surveyed marker showing that we are now dead center in this room so what that would have been used for was to then uh shoot a traverse down a drift and mark a center line on the next face to be drilled. From there, your foreman or your driller or your blaster, however they have that work divided out, will then mark up the face for how they want it to be shot or how they want it to be drilled. Face then gets drilled, loaded, shot. So we're continuing to find big old muck piles in here recall the one that uh, we saw earlier, another one down that way. I'm not really sure why we keep finding these, but I did do some research since we were last here regarding, well, really anything I could find. What we turned up was that the mine shut down in 81 and was then used for storage by uh, the operator, which was Molzer. Looks like we do have uh, some old survey markers here, something avenue. I could have laid it out like streets and avenues. And, uh, X2N, which is probably crosscut to north. I can count at least four breaks before we appear to hit the face. So this mine is not extremely extensive, but likewise, it's not tiny. We're just kind of proceeding crosswise on a nice dry area. Try and figure out the maximum extents. I 
think we might be hearing the uh, source of the water back in there. And then uh, cross cut three north. Hey guys, for those of you who have never really been underground or had anything to do with bats, this is what they look like while they're asleep during the day. You paint off of them so they ain't washed out? Yeah. It kind of looks like a furry chicken nugget with wings. That does. But don't get bit by them because they carry a lot of not fun things. And then you have to try and figure out which one bit you when the, when the hospital staff want a sample and your buddies wind up taking three or four, capturing them in an igloo cooler and giving them to hospital security. And it's always a fun time. Um, don't, don't, don't laugh too hard. It actually happened. Actually, do laugh. Yeah, that, that actually happened. Well, it's not either of us. Nope. So we're uh, down to crosscut four north now. We're on, continuing on, what's the label is T5 Avenue. Trying to go a little bit methodically. Yeah, there's another furry chicken nugget. Chicken nugger. Bad bat. Yeah, that is bad. Good eye. You got slabbiness there. Yeah. See all this right here. Came down from up there. That's interesting. So it looks like Hey Gail, this was uh, one of their working faces, one of the last working faces. So this is a uh, a partial shot into what would have been T5, and then uh, yeah, this is cross cut five north. So we're needing to be real careful about the back here. Um, I don't know what they used for scaling. I, I think they hand scaled it. I haven't seen an indication of mechanical scaling. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so this is only one end, about six to eight feet here. So they were shooting real short, real short drill holes, which may actually mean that they were drilling with a jack leg rather than a jumbo. Quite possibly. With a jack leg, you can only work so much steel before it's cumbersome. We're coming up to crosscut six north. Go ahead. structure uh, looks like moisture or some quartz or uh, calcite. Probably calcite probably calcite we get calcite inclusions in our mine run into run into veins so far they've actually miners here did a pretty good job of labeling their cross cuts so we're continuing to uh, I was saying to cross cut six north, which this is as far as we're going to go here because this was their last working face. Can you get the spotlight over here on full power? Uh, yeah, try and come closer so we can shoot all the way down here. So. I can't tell if they shot seven north or uh, if they did not. 
Oh my Christ. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're definitely not going back here because this isn't shot rock. Uh, that shot rock. That shot rock. This pancaked off the back. That's about a. Uh, Christ on a cracker. That's a that's a foot thick by forty foot wide by eighty foot deep. And fall back, Jesus. Uh, so we're we're not going that way. Yeah. Let's continue down five north. Uh, so six north looks like it's in really bad shape. So we're on, I don't know if this is designated T5 or T6 Avenue now. At Crosscut 5 North. Please. Got it is loaded. Tire here. So this continues to, let's call it, uh, T, so this is T6 that we're in, T7, T8, and it looks like at T8, uh, mining stopped. Let me see here. Oh, wow. What, you see the tire? Yeah, we've got a uh, haul truck or loader tire right here that's probably four or five feet across. Mm -hmm. And probably, I know they ran a loader in here. We see we've been able to find nothing, uh, no historical photos, no information about this mine beyond uh, a couple MSHA citation dockets from the late 70s, early 80s, which is what I was starting to get to earlier. They were cited for not properly blocking off entrances. So we're on T6, crosscut 4 north, which proceeds, yeah, like we What kind of crystals you got? Yeah. Yeah, it just looks like some microcrystalline calcite. So, uh, fun fact for those of y'all who like crystals... Calcite is actually calcium carbonate, or it's a calcium carbonate polymorph. You know what else is a calcium carbonate polymorph? This entire scene that was being mined. Limestone. Yep. Aragonite. And dolomite is a combination of calcium carbonate and magnesium carbonate. Yes. And nobody actually knows definitively how calcite turns into dolomite, but it does. Somehow some of the calcite gets... She's a geology fiend. Yep, got big old ruts in here. They were running decent sized equipment. Those tracks could be 40 years old. Mm -hmm. Probably some sort of old roof. Um, oil, like from your hands or a bat's feet, will actually stain overcome. rock. Yeah, it'll stain rock with kind of a black, like is up on the ceiling here. So this could be a, a fairly major bat hibernaculum. Yeah, and some bats are migratory. Indeed. Which would explain why they're not here right now. And we don't have a floor covered in dead bats killed from killed by any kind of disease. It absolutely is. Well, I'm really glad I actually seen that the loudest I would honestly say most violent place on the line 
to habitate, possibly because no sane predator would go into there. Mm -hmm. Back to uh, Crosscut with the Anfo Magazine trailer. We had climbed up on that junk pile earlier. And found a turtle also. Yep, found uh, turtle shells, possible owl carcass. This mine ecologically is becoming like a cave, like a natural cave. It is. You have bats, you have insects that adapt to it. You have turtles that tried to adapt to it and failed. Screen? Mm, I don't know if that's a screen. It's some sort of mesh material. It is. I'm trying to make sure I don't get over my boot tops. Yeah, it looks like a catwalk, not a screen. A uh, screen is a uh, great used in a uh, in a screen, which is a uh, a vibrate or vibrating screen deck, which is used to classify material by size. They're very big in aggregate processing. That sort of looks like one. Think like the colander you use to strain your spaghetti. But giant, vibrating, and loud, and potentially deadly. And we use it to screen, basically to divide large rock from smaller rock by size. Yes. So it looks as if the cross cut with the, uh, the magazine trailer has been designated cross cut one north. So the one beside it could be considered zero north or one west it depends on what kind of nomenclature we're looking to use the water in here is very cold we can feel it through our boots man we, you just struggle to illuminate mines with drifts this big i need to get like a one of them ridiculous 5,000 lumen spotlights. It's about like what we use on our jumbo. That drop right there? Yep. That was crystal clear a minute ago and now it's all but hidden. Yeah, this is why cave diving is dangerous, as you were saying, because this stuff can take forever to settle. So uh, we're now in uh, T1 drift at... Uh, Yeah, T1 drift, whichever cross cut this is, three or four north, I believe. Maybe three north, two north. Uh, anyway, so this is a big old pile of backfill. So I was talking about MSHA citations. One of them had been issued for not having disused entrances properly guarded. Yep, I saw that too. Uh, so there was a mention to five different entrances into this mine. And the interesting thing about that, we don't feel any kind of natural ventilation. Uh, there were three entrances that were specified to be used for ventilation that were mostly secured and they were significantly smaller, about 10 feet square. And then there were the primary entrances being this one here coming into uh, T1. I do not know what that noise was, but I don't like it. That came from the rocks, so we're uh, head back the way we came. If your rock starts making noises, especially in an inactive mine, you move. Yeah, it's time to go. That it is. So I'll I'll cut back if there is if we do turn up anything else interesting. But 
in the very likely event that we do not. This has been Head Frame Hunters at the Derby Limestone Mine. Adios, and thank you very much for watching. Mm -hmm.